ionization energy. This is related to the ionic radii, but it is a different concept altogether. Specifically, ionization energy is the energy required for an atom to give away its electron. And there is a number of ionization energies that an atom can go through. We have the first ionization energy, the second ionization energy, and for some atoms we can go all the way up to the eighth ionization energy. Um, the concept is uh, rather simplistic though. The idea is that whatever the number here is, you know, whether it's the first or the second or the third ionization energy, that number is going to be directly related to the charge of the product that you're generating. So the first ionization energy yields the plus one cation. The second ionization energy yields the two plus cation. And the products um, are arising directly from a reagent that has a charge one less than the product. So if the product has a plus one charge, the reactant has zero charge. If the product has a two plus charge, the reactant has a plus one charge. Um, so that's a concept that you will need to keep in mind because we're going to use it in future lectures. Uh, but yeah, first ionization energy yields plus one cation. Second ionization energy yields this two plus cation. And there's only a difference of plus one between reactant and product. All right, looking at the periodic table though, there's uh, a lot more to this story that can be um, expressed. We, uh, for instance, know that if we look at the trend going from top to bottom, the ionization energy tends to decrease. As you can see here, hydrogen starts at 1312 kilojoules per mole and goes down to 400 kilojoules per mole. Looking at the halogens, the same thing happens. Uh, we go from 1681 down to 930. And generally speaking, that trend from top to bottom repeats itself no matter which group you're looking at. Now, um, if you look at the second ionization energy, what you're going to notice is that the value, uh, and if we focus on the halogens, the value actually goes up. So I'm going to go back to the first ionization energy. So here we go, first ionization energy, the value of fluorine was 1681, chlorine is 1251. If we switch to the second ionization energy, we see that the values have gone up to 3374 and 2297. And if we move on to the third ionization energy, we see that those values are going even to higher numbers, 6050 and 3822. So increasing the ionization energy increases the value of energy required to remove the electrons. And the reason this is so is simply because the moment you develop a positive charge, the electron is going to want to remain in the atom even more so than it did before. And the higher the positive charge becomes, the more difficult it's going to be for you to remove the electron. So we see that um, that characteristic in the numbers here on the table. So from top to bottom, the ionization energy tends to decrease. And the reason it's decreasing is because the atomic radius of the element or ion is increasing. And the higher the value of the ionic radius or atomic radius of the element is, the farther away the electrons are going to be from the nucleus. That also implies that the effective nuclear charge is less, and so the outer electrons are a lot easier to remove the bigger the atom becomes. So that kind of explains the trend right here. But going in the horizontal trajectory, um, what we see is that going from left to right for the first row, there is an increase in the ionization energy. Looking at the second row, we see an increase from lithium to beryllium, but then interestingly enough, going on to boron, the ionization energy decreases. Then it starts increasing again, up until nitrogen, but then we hit oxygen and the value goes down. And then it starts increasing once more. So there's a little bit more to the story than meets the eye. Generally speaking though, you see an increase in the ionization energy going from left to right, but there are some discrepancies that we're gonna address in a second. The second ionization energy, similar, uh, we see a similar uh, picture. We see first a decrease, then an increase, followed by a decrease, followed by an increase. And the third ionization energy shows, shows the same thing. We see an increase, followed by a decrease, followed by an increase, then another decrease, and increases after that. So there is a little bit of a discrepancy, a double hump, if you will, going on in the trend. 
Now, generally speaking, from left to right, there's an increase in ionization energy, which can be attributed to having a greater effective nuclear charge in each one of those elements. And as shown in the previous slides, it is evident that as the charge of the ion increases, the ionization energy value also increases. It becomes harder and harder to remove those electrons, the more positive charge you end up developing on the ion. But let's go back to these discrepancies for a second, because I want to make you aware of something interesting, something periodic going on here. For the first ionization energy, I show you that from beryllium to boron, and the same thing is can be said for magnesium to aluminum, we see a decrease in the ionization energy as opposed to the trend that I just told you, which is the increase overall from left to right. And going from nitrogen, the nitrogen group to the oxygen group, we also see a decrease. So there's something interesting going on there. Now, if we look at the second ionization energy, we see that same exact trend, but instead of being and happening with the boron group and the oxygen group, it's now happening with the carbon and the fluorine group. All right, so from boron to carbon, we see a decrease, and from oxygen to fluorine, we see a decrease. And if we move on to the third ionization energy, we see that no longer are the boron or carbon groups uh, having the dip in the ionization energy, but now it actually moves on to the nitrogen. So there is this sequential movement from left to right as we keep increasing the ionization energy. I'll show you in a little bit why that happens, but right now I just want you to be aware that as you increase the ionization energy, yeah, you kind of have this movement throughout the periodic table. All right, now, the second thing I want to uh, show you as well is that when you look at the first ionization energy, the first group, the alkali metals, they have the lowest values out of the bunch. And we kind of expect that because we already said from left to right, um, the ionization energy increases. So the alkali metals have the smallest values by default. And it also means that the um, noble gases have the largest values by default. Now, uh, here I'm highlighting also the alkaline earth metals, group 2A, to show you kind of an intermediate value. Now, the trend as I'm depicting from left to right, you know, as increasing in value for the ionization energy only really applies to some degree to the first ionization energy. Because when you go to the second ionization energy, what you see is that there's a movement of the different blocks right here. You will notice that no longer are the alkali, alkali metals the ones with the smallest ionization value. In fact, by the time you get to the second ionization energy, they are the ones that have the largest ionization energy. So basically the groups that we had before for first ionization energy have moved to the right. Notice the red block of the noble gases now it's present on the halogens because it's basically moved to the right. And think of this as being kind of like a, a circle. You know, you just kind of keep going in circles. But uh, now the alkaline earth metals are the ones with the lowest values. And the boron group is the one that has the intermediate value. And if we go to the third ionization energy, we now see that the highest values are present for the alkaline earth metals. And the lowest values are now present for group 3A. Now, this is not just a mere coincidence. This actually has to do entirely from the fact that we are kind of hitting some key um, electron configurations for the various elements. And this is what's allowing these different trends, this kind of movement, this walking movement in the periodic table to happen. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to go back to the first organization energy values, the ones where we have some discrepancies with boron and oxygen in terms of the dipping effect, but we kind of wanted to show you that there is a movement associated with this, which is also associated with the electron configurations. So going back to the discrepancies, um, I've already stated that going from beryllium to boron, we see a decrease in the ionization energy, even though we're moving from left to right. And going from nitrogen to oxygen, we also see a decrease in the ionization energy, even though we're going from left to right. And the way to explain this is to look at the electron configurations, specifically to draw out the electron configurations. Beryllium is 2s2 and no electrons in the 2p. Boron, on the other hand, has a 2s2, 2p1 configuration. And what you can see right here is that boron has its last electron on an orbital that is got more angular nodes than the s orbital. And because of that, it is a little 
uh, unstable in respect to the 2s. So that also means that the electron of boron, the last electron of boron, is going to be easier to remove than any of the electrons of the 2s orbital. And it is because of that reason that you see the dipping of the ionization energy of boron compared to beryllium. Now, for nitrogen and oxygen, a similar idea takes place. Notice that the configuration of nitrogen is 2s2 and 2p3. That means that you have each of the boxes of the 2p set of half filled with electrons of the same spin. But for oxygen, the configuration is 2p4, meaning that one of the boxes will be paired up with a downspin electron. And the reason oxygen has a lower ionization energy is because you're now dealing with the electron-electron repulsion of these two electrons in the same box. And you've also kind of the, somewhat destabilized the, um, the fact that you had a half-filled shell right here that you know, maximized the uh, exchange energy. But more so than that is the electron repulsion that's going on for these two electrons in the 2p4 set of oxygen that lowers its ionization energy compared to that of nitrogen. So it's kind of a nice idea and a, ni a nice way to kind of explain things and we chemists use this premise quite often to explain different trends in ionization energy. That being said, in the next video, I will show you a way of approximating the actual value of the ionization energies using Slater rules. So stay tuned.